We've got Jogger for now, Kazakhstan. Don't really know too much about Kazakhstan. So this is going to be really interesting to check out. Let's jump straight into it, man. Guys, no, I'm not going to do a Borat impression, okay? <laughs> that movie didn't even have a single Kazakh person in it. They filmed the Kazakhstan part in a gypsy village in Romania, and Sasha Baron Cohen was speaking Hebrew half the time. It did right, have okay. chosen by like tenfold, so there's that. Oh, Borat is such a good film, <laughs> man. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Today we cover our first Central Asian country. Uh, well, I mean, doesn't Afghanistan kind of count? <laughs> doesn't Afghanistan kind of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazakhstan is cool because it's like the country that melts both Europe and East Asia together in a very uh, unique way. You can even kind of tell just by looking at the people. It's like they look kind of Asian, but then you're not sure because some of them have like light Caucasian features. Right. I've been in Kazakhstan, I've been getting that my whole life. And how did it all happen? Well, it's partially to do with the location that they live in, which brings us to smart bag in the middle, isn't it? Wait, now, is my geography is... good? Is my geography good? You have Russia, and I'm pretty sure Kazakhstan is just right in between, like below Russia. Europe's to the left of it, and then you got India, China to the right of it. I'm, See the bridge I'm pretty between sure. Europe and Asia, if you consider the Middle East Asia, but Kazakhstan is like the bridge between Europe and East Asia. First of all, hey. Kazakhstan is located in Central Asia, surrounded by five other countries. So close to Mongolia, but a 20 mile wide corridor separates them. That's pretty close. On the northeast sides of the Caspian Sea, I'll where take the it. seaport Aktau is located. It is the world's largest landlocked country, ninth largest in the world at nearly 1 million square kilometers. Like seriously, the country's distance is like the same from London. Oh to my Istanbul. God. Speaking of which, the longest road in Europe, the E40. I didn't realize how big it is it extends over 5300 miles all the way from Calais France to Ritter Kazakhstan Wow <laughs> cute the country is divided into 14 regions or Oblistar with the capital Astana located in the Akmola region nonetheless Almaty in the south is actually the largest city with Skimkent rounding out number three and all three of these cities have the busiest airports in Kazakhstan now you know what it's actually crazy the fact that like how big it is where it's located, and I don't really know much about it. Now, Kazakhstan was part of the former USSR prior to independence, so you see kind of like leftover disputes when it comes to territorial anomalies. Basically, right. it kind of went like this. Hello, I'm Gorbachev, and all you republics are relinquished from the USSR, which is not the USSR anymore, but just plain Russia. Oh, and it's the year 1990. Okay, but we have like <laughs> mix-up communities, so where do we draw the borders? You wanted this- Wait, what? Okay. Is this- That's not Macedonia, is it? What what is this? This logo is looking like the Xbox flag. But we have like I mean the Xbox logo. So where do we draw the? It's actually pretty cool. You wanted this, you figured it out. <laughs> the Kyrgyzstan episode is gonna be so fun, I promise. In the Caspian Sea, Kazakhstan has a little dispute oh, with Russia. Oh no, 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 no! So it's Kyrgyzstan. Never heard of it. A hey, cool ass flag though. Over the marshy Ukantni Island, as well as the Jeski and Malijem Chushni sandbanks, known for being located above an offshore oil producing zone. Then we have that little dispute with Uzbekistan uh, over the Vozrozhdenia Island, which is now a peninsula due to the drying up of the Aral Sea. The only other strange territorial anomaly would probably be the famous Baikonur Cosmodrome. This is the site where the first launch of the first satellite Sputnik and the first manned oh, wow. by Yuri Gagarin happened. This place is leased to Russia until 2050, and today you will need a Russian visa if you want to visit, unless you're lucky no way. A guided tour. Yeah, in 1991, the Russians were like, All right, Kazakhstan, you are your own country now. No more USSR. You're free. Wow, I get my own space? The Caspian Sea, the mines, the mineral fields, the grassland? Oh, look, a space station. Ah, da, 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 da. That's still mine. That's still mine. Okay, fine. <laughs> but remember, you do owe me from all that nuclear testing we're doing on the east side. Now it's like the most radioactive thing on the planet. Semi Palatinsk. Look it up. I mean, well, Wait, they, what's that? That they didn't realize Kazakhstan would eventually secede, so yeah. Nonetheless, there are over 27,000 ancient monuments throughout Kazakhstan. Places cool. of interest might include things like the Monument of Independence, the Pyramid of Peace and Harmony, oh, wow, the Secretary cool. Mound with the Golden Man, the Soyuz 11 Memorial, Khan Shatter, the tallest tent wow. in the world, Baiterek Tower, Medu, the world's high oh, Memorial, my, Khan Shatter. How have I not seen any of these? Like, ever. I've, I've never seen the this. The tallest tent in the world, Baiterek Never seen like a picture of this is really cool. Tower, Medu, the world's highest skating rink, Ascension Cathedral, Aristan Bab Mausoleum, the National Museum of Kazakhstan, wow. Museum of Folk Music, Fountain Circus, Koktobe Hill Recreational Center with rides and attractions, and a Beatles monument, Nur Astana Mosque, and the Triumphal Arch of Mangilik El. But just don't go to Semi Palatinsk, it's like worse than Chernobyl. Yeah, that... I've never heard about Semi Palatinsk. I've never heard about that. It's worse than Chernobyl. Why, why have I never heard about? You know what I mean? Like, it was a hard blow to the that? land, which is otherwise pretty majestic. Which brings us to... 
Kazakhstan's landscape is kind of like an alternate universe Twilight Zone version of Mongolia. It's like kind of similar, but there's something a little off. First of all, the country is generally flat with massive steppes and plains like the Caspian Depression, the aye, Kirkai aye. Valley, and the Kazakh Uplands, which compose the majority of the country's land makeup. In the east and south, so you get the mountains along the Altai and Tian Shan ranges, the highest mountain being Khan Tengri, which again is like the Roraima of Central Asia as it acts as a tri-point border between them, China, and Kyrgyzstan. Cool. I don't know why China even bothered with it though. It's like, come on, you already have like half of Mount Everest. Why take parts <laughs> of other countries' tallest peaks? I know, right? Otherwise, numerous rivers cross the country. The longest one China. being the Irtish River, which flows through the northeast, shared with Russia and China, dangerously close to the radioactive fallout from Semipalatinsk. However, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually really interested to learn about this. I can't lie, I might need to watch a video on it. I, I don't know why on earth I've never heard about any of this. But, but the Ishim River yeah. is more important as it passes through the capital Astana. Then you get the strange I've heard a lot about Chernobyl though. Bahash because the western half of it is fresh water and the east is salt water. Strange, huh? And that's not even half the strange. Then you have things like the Valley of Balls. Huh? <laughs> Valley. With strange spherical eroded boulders averaging around three to four meters wide. You have this strange submerged forest, Tamgali Gorge, which is averaging around oh three meters wide. Oh my god. Wide. You have this. That is so cool. Wow. The blue water, like the forest and the um, the rocks around it, and then the forest inside of like um, the water. Wow, that is so cool. This strange submerged forest, Tamgali Gorge, Chardon Canyon, and the most notable natural landmark, the Drying Aral Sea. It was made by diverting water in the former Soviet times, and now you can see a strange post-apocalyptic setting with rusty no abandoned way. ships and sea vessels in a dry grassland as Bactrian camels graze quietly in the distance. <laughs> by the way, if you're part of an alternative rock band, this is like the perfect place to make a location shoot for an album cover. Oh anyway, my God. Kazakhstan is loaded with natural resources. About 100 of the elements on the periodic table can be found mined in Kazakhstan. Cool. They take 12th place in oil reserves and they are in the top 20 of gas reserves, most of which center around the 970 square mile Tengiz oil field, which is one of the largest in the world, making it the country's largest export, oil, right. which in return makes them the largest economy in Central Asia as they hold about 60% of the entire region's GDP. Wildlife oh, wow. is actually quite prevalent. You have voles, gray herons, bats, pygmy cormorants, wolves, foxes, stoats, marbled polecats, oh, gray so herons, cute. bats, pygmy cormorants, wolves, foxes, stoats. Stoes, what is that? <laughs> what actually is that? It's like it's like a mix between like a fox and a squirrel. Like what's <laughs> marbled polecats, saiga antelopes? What the mate, what is wrong with like what is going on with the nose? Why is that like, drooping like the two that? Two national animals, the snow wow, leopard people. and the golden step eagle. However, the horse is probably the most important animal. It's been said that the horse was probably first tamed and domesticated in Kazakhstan. Uh, eh, debatable. The horse also plays into food. There's a joke that Kazakhs are the second largest meat eaters in the world, the first being wolves. Ha! Challenge accepted. The national dish being beshbarmak, literally translated as five fingers because you're supposed to eat it with your hands. It's uh, noodles with horse meat on top. Was, yes, they wait, eat four fingers because you're supposed to eat it well, yeah, that looks messy for your hands, though. Hands. It's noodles with horse meat on top. Yeah. Oh, listen, right? We don't he eat horse meat in the UK, but there was like a massive news outlet like happening that our main superstore was selling horse meat instead of like the burger meat, and no one had a clue until something was found, and it was actually true. Yes, they eat horse. However, the rule is you do not eat the horse you ride. Stop copying me. It's also said that apples originated in Kazakhstan. Love the apples. name of the city, Almaty, actually translates Favorite to fruit. the place of many apples. You can even find many wild apple trees and forests all across Kazakhstan. Otherwise, Kazakhstan does pretty well at staying afloat. I mean, they became the first former Soviet nation to receive a positive global investment rank in 2002 they paid off all their debt to the imf nice. nonetheless all that nice. forward moving does come with a little bit of backstory and a tincture of controversy this is like a hot now, I personally love meeting ethnic Kazakh people because I feel like they could totally pass as my siblings that were separated from me at birth. It's weird. They've got just that beautiful mixture of Asian and Europe. First of all, the country has about 18.1 million people and has about six people per... That's quite small for um, the size it is. ...square kilometer. The country is about 67% ethnically Kazakh, whereas about 20% are Russians, and the rest are made up of other groups, mostly Turkic peoples like Uzbeks, Uyghurs, and other groups like Chechens, Ukrainians, Tartars, and Poles. They use cool. the Kazakhstani tenge as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, 
and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's talk about the largest indigenous people group. What exactly is Everyone drives Kazakh? on a ride. Well, today that UK. question is a lot harder to answer than what it may have been a thousand years ago. In the shortest way, Kazakhs are classified as a Turkic people group, not Turkish, Turkic. There's a difference in which they share the same linguistic structure as many other countries and people groups across Asia and Europe. I found this video hosted by Aisulu from the channel Gilo Team, which they do a great job explaining. Check it out. Kazakhs and Turks are both Turkish nationalities. The reason why they look differently is that the Turks are Augusti Turks, and the Kazakhs are the Kipchaks Turks. Kipchaks Turks are still in Asia, and Augusti Turks migrated to Anatolia. Kipchaks Turks are the Mongols, so they look Mongoloid. The Kazakhs look like the Kitais, speaking Islam and speaking in Russian language. Awesome video, right? This creates a whole new unique kind of populace that looks like an entire nation of biracials. Kind of like what happened with Brazil with the Pardo people. Yeah, Brazil. Oh my god. Like, I, I watched a video on Brazil and they're just so, like, diverse. Do you know what I mean? Most of Kazakhstan is kind of actually at a cultural crossroads. More people speak Russian than the actual native Kazakh language. Yep, I feel you. Nonetheless, the president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, who has been their only president since independence and has a little bit of controversy, like when he held a snap election in 2015 after being accused of human rights violations, just announced that in the next few years, Kazakhstan will be switching over from using the Cyrillic alphabet to the Latin one. Some saying this being a subtle move to Kazakhify their country. I? Wait, what did you say about the president? Eh, just look it up. We don't have time. As a Turk country, Kazakhs are related to... I can't lie, I'm interested about the president, uh, president part as well. You can kind of understand the speech of their other Turkic neighbors that extend as far as the frozen Arctic tundras of northeast Russia to the Black Sea with Turkey and the Gagauz people in that strange autonomous unit in Moldova. Moldova is going to be a fun episode, trust me. It's like a place where people don't care if everything is burning to the ground. They just dance through it. Anyway, oh obviously God, I want to watch it now. Into the full history of Kazakhstan, Moldova, remember that. I can put it. Scythians, Turkic-speaking Mongol tribes arrive. Huns invade. Arabic Karakhanid Turks come in and introduce Islam, tribal powers fight for control, Khitians invade, Timur Ilang builds an empire, Kazakhs break away from the Uzbek Khanate, Zungar people invade, Russians come in and help, then the Russians kind of take over and rule them, Khan Kene revolts against Russians unsuccessfully, tons of new Russians and Ukrainians flock in to work, Kazakhs resist military draft in World War One. they become an oh, autonomous wow. republic in the USSR, Russian influence for decades, independence in 1991, capital is moved, tons of new Kazakhs migrate back to Wait, Kazakhstan. can you do that? Can you resist like being drafted? Kazakhstan and ethnic Russians move out, making Kazakhs majority in their own country How does that again. Work? Nazarbayev becomes their only president. Bunch of oil, gas, pipeline controversy. And here we are today. Now, when it comes to culture, Kazakhstan is quite unique. For one, the majority at around 64% identify at least nominally as Muslim. However, in 1990, President Nazarbayev actually created a separate mufiat for the Kazakh Muslims. He forbade religious political parties and removed Kazakhstan from the authority of the Muslim Board of Central Asia. This decreed Kazakhstan as a secular state, even though the government kind of puts strict control on all religious communities. This right. makes Kazakhstan the only Central Asian country whose constitution does not assign special status to Islam. And apart from certain areas with mosques, you wouldn't even really notice it too much, especially in the booming cities. This is because Kazakhstan's culture is way more Turkic and Mongol derived than stereotypical Middle East Arab Muslim derived. There are people of wanderers, nomads, some people even still live in yurts in the countryside. Oh, geez, really? Again? During celebrations, you can see people wearing traditional costumes, playing traditional step folk music. By the way, they celebrate three different New Year's, Gregorian, Nari's Spring Equinox, and the Julian calendar. They have so many horse-related festivals and games like Pick up the napkin and steal the woman on a horse and if you can't she gets to beat you with a whip game. Aside from what? all that, Kazakhs are known for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Some notable people from Kazakhstan might include people like cyclist Alexandre Vinokurov, Sabina Altinbekova, Timur Bekmambetov, Gennady Golovkin, Denis Ten, I've Abai, heard of that boxer. Bayuli, Ken Alibek, Abilai Khan, Olja Sulemenov, Marat Jlambayev, and Shukrat Mitalipov. At least those are the people you guys, the Kazakh geographer people mentioned to me. I literally have no idea who most of those people are. So basically, with Kazakhstan, you get this strange land of East Asian, European, mixed kind of nominally Muslim people that speak Russian that love to ride and eat horses. Yeah, sounds like people I'd hang with. And let's find out who else thinks the same in... Very cool. Very cool, very interesting. Kazakhstan is like the kingpin big brother of Central Asia. If you want to talk to any of the other former Soviet republics, you usually got to start here first. Now, they right. generally get along with other Turkic and Russian-speaking countries. However, Central Asia is kind of like the Balkans, which it's like a family with a bit of dysfunction. Turkmenistan is like the angry brother that isolates himself, and Uzbekistan is like the angry brother that argues with all the other brothers. Kyrgyzstan is like the little brother that they love, but they keep asking them for money. Tajikistan is like the distant cousin that speaks a Persian-based language. Turkey, Mongolia, and South Korea are like far away distant 
distant close friends that share the same Turkic and Mongoloid history and culture as well. They've established great trade deals. Tons of Koreans seem to love moving to Kazakhstan. The US was the first place to recognize them as a state after independence and they've cool. been jumping in on investments. But when it of comes to their best friends, most Kazakh people I've talked to have said Russia. Although certain seasons of controversy have existed, overall, Russia has not only been- You know what, from watching a lot of these geography nows, you never really see that much Russia being a best friend of someone. So, you know. Close in customs unions, I respect they it. and Belarus share a free I trade respect agreement. It. But in almost every other level of diplomacy, they get along well. They both speak Russian. They both love Russian food and TV shows. And even though Kazakhstan is trying to wean itself off the Russian influence to research a more Kazakh identity, they can't help but cling on to certain aspects that were so deeply ingrained in their history from the Russians. Of course, in conclusion, Kazakhstan is a country that is full of East Asian, mixed, horse loving, Muslim majority identifying, Russian speaking, government controversifying, but moving forward with resource extracting oh there's country. always controversy that was a fun episode when, uh, when, hey, when Russia's involved there's always some there's always <laughs> can stand all the wonderful info we just learned can't you oh. that was so hor that was the I think that's the worst pun I've ever made in this entire series <laughs> stay tuned Kenya really good video though enjoy that hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well if you didn't make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe for more content and I'll see you all in the next video peace